Hi everyone. Good evening. I think I've got the um, the best one to talk about tonight because it's all about intimacy and hearing God, which is what the Christian faith is all about. And aren't we so blessed to have a living relationship with the Lord Jesus? He's so amazing. And you see, intimacy, you know, the meaning of it, it means unconditional acceptance and closeness. And you know, that is the amazing thing about a relationship with Jesus, because we are accepted by him unconditionally. It's nothing to do with us and what we've done. We can just have a relationship with him and we can become really close to him. And as close as we want to, it's up to us. It's our choice how much time we spend with him. Um, you know, our time in the secret place with him is essential in these days. There's no shortcuts, uh, just him and us, an audience of one. There can't be anything better. You know, just listening to him and not to any other voices is just precious, it's special and it's just amazing because he's got so much to say to us if only we make time to listen to him. So I'm going to just explore briefly, because we haven't got much time, I'm going to explore briefly Moses and his story in Exodus. And I just want to bring a few points out because, you know, Moses had quite an incredible relationship with Jesus. Um, I'm sure lots of you know the story of Moses so, so well. And if you don't, then have a look in Exodus. Um, so it starts at the, very, the beginning where Moses, who's a Hebrew, and he is miraculously saved from death when he was a baby. And he grew up as an Egyptian. But when he witnessed the cruelty of the Egyptians towards his own people, he turned in anger, killing one of his men. And so panicking, he fled to Midian and he married and he had a family. Meanwhile, the Israelites, there, they began to cry out to God because their burdens were becoming really unbearable. And so we read in Exodus 2, verse 24, God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And so God looked on the Israelites, and he was concerned about them. And then we move to Exodus 3, which narrates the story, the famous story of Moses and the burning bush. You see, God will do anything to get our attention. And here, the angel of the Lord appears to Moses from the middle of the burning bush. And of course, Moses goes over because he's very, very curious. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't be if you saw a burning bush? And, um, but it wasn't being consumed by the fire. And so God began to call out his name. And this started Moses' journey as a powerful leader drawn back to God to rescue the Israelites. You know, despite his past mistakes, you know, he thought because he had murdered someone, God couldn't use him. But you see, God knew the destiny on him and he wanted him to come back to him. And despite how Moses felt about himself with all his fears of failure and letting God down, God wanted to use him. You see, God will use any situation or circumstances to draw us back to himself. And I believe in these times, God wants his people back, you know, and, you know, with the pandemic, you know, whether it be work, relational issues, illness, you know, God uses these things. I don't believe he gives those things, but he uses them to draw his people back. Because, you know, unfortunately, it's t when, when times are difficult, then we start to cry out to God. And God wants to partner with his people because he wants to do mighty miracles through us. Mm. Um, and it's all so he will get the glory and people will come to know him. And um, we read, you know, Moses did some incredible um, miracles, signs and wonders, you know, like turning water into blood, you know, all the plagues that we heard about the frogs and the locusts, you know, I wouldn't like to be in those days with all those frogs and those locusts around, um, but they had to get the attention, the attention of the people. Um, you know, he parted the Red Sea, um, bread from heaven, water from a rock, incredible miracles. And you see, that's our God. He's a supernatural God and he can do 
anything through us, ordinary people, because he's the extraordinary God. Today, you know, we see um, it, it seems to be getting darker, you know, thick darkness. It says in Isaiah, doesn't it? Darkness covers the earth. Thicker darkness covers the people. But you see, God, he's hearing the cries of his people. So wherever you are from, whether you're all the way in Dallas or you're um, in Solihull or you're here in Liverpool, you know, God is hearing the cries of his people. He's hearing the cries coming from the communities, from the poor, from the destitute, from the helpless, from the oppressed. And he needs someone like Moses, someone like you to listen to him and to be obedient to what he asks us to do. So it's so important that we spend time with the Lord to hear what he is saying because our neighbourhoods, our families need God. Now Moses also is interesting that um, he encountered God on a holy mountain and this was alone. And so that speaks, you know, of being on your own in a, in a special place. And the holiness, the mountain, it speaks of consecration. And God is calling his people today to deal with anything or any blockages in our lives that will stop his spirit from moving. You know, in Psalm 24, it says, Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Um, I know one of the prayers I pray regularly um, is from Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know any offence within me. And, you know, I ask Holy Spirit to really show if there's anything at all that's blocking his spirit from moving within me. And, you know, it's really a good idea that we deal with all our stuff in the private place before it's exposed in the public place. And that's really significant, important today. So as Moses spent um, spend time on the mountain with God, it was there he received the commandments and he received divine instructions on how to live for him. And it's as we spend time with him that God wants to download strategies and blueprints that will help us to navigate in these perilous <coughs> times. You know, Moses learned by obedience to witness the mighty hand of God liberating the people. And we too, if we are obedient to the Lord, we can see God freeing, delivering, healing and saving his people. And then it moves on in Exodus 33 and also in Numbers 12. It talks about Moses meeting God in the tent of meeting. And it says, I, um, God says, I speak with Moses face to face. See, Moses knew the voice of the Lord and he was chosen to go right into God's presence. He knew him as a friend and you know, God wants to know each one of us as a friend. Yes, we're his children, but he wants us um, to um, know him as a friend. And there's a lovely, lovely scripture in Psalm 25, verse 14. And it says, there's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh, where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. And I want to be one of those. I want to be so close to him that I hear his secrets, that he can trust me. He can trust me because I've been obedient with when he's spoken to me and I've done what he's asked me to do. And I just would love, you know, for him to reveal more um, so that I can be used then to set people free. And we find out, you know, um, also there were other great leaders within the Bible who, you know, had the same privilege of just being able to be with God. Joshua, you know, he's a really good example of a magnificent national leader. And there were other leaders like David. You know, David, he was called a lover of God's heart. 
and we read all these beautiful psalms where they speak of such an intimacy and such a desire uh, to be with the Lord. And you can tell, you know, he's so vulnerable with God. He really bared his soul. He, you know, issued every complaint. He was a showed anger at times, but you know, he always ended up praising God. And it's, it, the Psalms are beautiful, um, showing how intimate David was. And you see, we too can have that intimacy. We can be so open and vulnerable with God because he can cope with it. <laughs> and uh, the, the more intimate, the more vulnerable you are, then obviously the more intimate you become. And then in the New Testament, we find John. John, I love John. He's described as the beloved disciple. And he was found lying on Jesus's chest at the Last Supper. And it's just a beautiful picture of the closeness. He could hear the heartbeat of the Father. And, you know, I just long, you know, to really be that close. I'm so in tune with the Father that I'm um, hearing his heartbeat. I'm following his, you know, plans. Um, my heart is conjoined with his. That's one of my prayers that I pray. And then... Because John was so close, you know, we find that um, he was then given the revelations for the end times. And so we look at Revelation and you can see um, the amazing revelations he was given because, you know, God knew he could trust John with these secrets, these revelations. And the amazing thing is that all of us, every single one of us who've given our life to Jesus, we too can have the intimacy that David had, that John had, you know, that Moses had because of Jesus. Because Jesus, um, he, with his death, he ripped, the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. And it means that he, by his blood, it's made a way for us to boldly enter the throne room because sin is no longer a barrier because Jesus has paid a price and he has ransomed us from death. That is just incredible, incredible news for us. God is really wanting to speak to us. The problem is we sometimes just don't want to hear or we don't make time to hear or we're not listening. Um, you know, for too long, it feels like the enemy has just killed, stolen and destroyed. But you see, Jesus came to give us life in abundance. And it's time for his people, that's us, to walk in abundance of life and victory for which Christ won for us on the cross. It's not dependent on our ability. It's dependent on us being available and filled with the Holy Spirit. He enables us. He empowers us. And, you know, God is looking for people who know who they are in Christ and who Christ is in them. And he's looking for people who can hear him and know his voice. You know, it says, my sheep know my voice. And we can only do that if we spend time with him and if we read his word and we get to know him well so that we know when he's speaking to us, we recognize his voice. You know, in Romans 8, it says, the whole world is waiting on tiptoes for the revelation of the true sons and daughters. The world is waiting for us. The world is waiting for us to really be who we've been called to be. So God can use us to share his light, his peace, his love, his joy. This new year, um, the 5784, the Hebrew new year, it's called the open door and it's calling us to rise above all our limitations to the fullness of a God-given potential. You know, the Lord wants to release an anointing for creativity, for innovation, for strategic thinking, and he will equip his children with wisdom and discernment and um, all the things we need to navigate the difficult challenges we find ourselves in. And so all creation is waiting for us to pray, to listen and to respond to God. So why don't we? You know, are we like Moses? 
Uh, Do we feel ashamed and guilty of our past mistakes? Do we feel inadequate? Are we simply afraid to enter into God's presence? Are we too busy and distracted? Have we got our mind on other things? If only we will open our hearts and create space, God will speak to us in many ways. I wonder, how does God speak to you? Is it in prophetic dreams? Is it in prophetic visions and pictures? Is it scriptures? Is it prophetic acts? Is it revelation? Is it through his word? Is it through creation and or other people? Is it through circumstances? I know that God, God speaks to me mainly through his word, but he can speak to us in so many different ways. If only we will tune our ears um, and our eyes to see and to hear what he is saying to us in these days. God wants to do immeasurably more than we could dream or imagine. And he wants to do it through us. You know, I wonder what would our community, what would our region look like if we were full of Holy Spirit, if we were listening and obeying him. So how can we help ourselves to hear God? Well, first of all, we can be intentional. I think we have to be intentional in these days. You know, that might mean we have to get up earlier. You know, we might have to stop watching our favorite TV program. Um, We need to create space to listen and hear the Lord away from distractions. And you know what? It's so worth it. You know, it's so worth it when we make the time to spend with him. Try and, you know, to switch off from the busyness and the voices of the world. You know, switch off from the mobiles. Ask Holy Spirit. He's such a good teacher. Ask him, is there anything blocking you from hearing him? And then deal with it. Try, if you can, find a nice, quiet place. I have this lovely little prayer room in my house, which I just love going. As soon as I close the door, that's my time with the Lord. But if you can't do that, just find a little space. I know some people just love going out walking and then they can hear him or running. We've got someone in our team who just loves running. Um, Whatever suits you, just find a space where you're not going to be distracted and you can just hear what the Lord is saying. Daily, ask Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask him to speak and guide you through the day. And again, that's a prayer I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, guide me today. Help me to be, you know, in the right place, the right time, doing the right thing with the right people. And just lead me where you want me to be. Help me to hear you. Heighten my senses so I am so aware of you today. Read your Bible. You know, proclaim it. Pray it. Sing it, meditate on it, let your mind be renewed. You know, try to take any negative thoughts or wrong thoughts captive quickly. Don't allow fear to drive your mind. And if you can, you know, speak in tongues uh, and do it as much as you can because it does strengthen you. It says, doesn't it, it edifies you, it edifies your um, soul. And it it really does help to um, increase our sensitivity to God and his kingdom. Expect when we go to meet with him, expect he's going to speak to us. Expect it. Expect that we're going to see something. Um, You know, I get so excited thinking, what have you got for me today, Lord? You know, what are you going to show me? And uh, that's what we want um, to, to be like, where we are just keen and excited to be in his presence. Try not to give room to any fear or intimidation because when fear is around, it's very difficult to really hear from the Lord. Worship Jesus with all your heart and emotions. You know, he's worth it. We just spent some amazing time just now worshiping. And, you know, it just takes you into his presence. And when we worship, you know, the Lord really does speak to us. You know, so many times the downloads I have is through worship. I'm sure God was speaking to you tonight through the worship and we look forward to hearing what the Lord was saying. You know, learn to focus your mind and emotions on the things of God and flow with him. 
So they're just a few ideas. And I'm sure when you go into your breakout rooms, you'll have lots more ideas and things to share. But I just wanted to pray a prayer over us before we go into our breakout rooms. And it's an amazing prayer. You find it in, um, the, in Ephesians chapter 3. And it's Paul's prayer. And it's just a beautiful prayer to pray. Um, pray it over yourself each day. Pray it over your family. It's just a beautiful prayer. And so um, it's Ephesians three fourteen to 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you, with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so now we're going to go into our breakout rooms and there should be a one of our team members who will be leading you. And um, for those who are watching on YouTube, we're going to look at these questions. Um, so the first question you're going to look at is what are the distractions that stop you from hearing from the Lord? The second question in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. It has the famous grace that we speak over ourselves. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now we say it, but is that something we just say at the end of a service? Or is this something we live by? So explore that and have a little look at it because it's very, very powerful. And then the, finally... Ask God to speak to you and give you a word of encouragement for your partner or for someone in your family. And so if you are watching on YouTube, you might want to take a few minutes to consider those questions in view of what's been shared this evening. So we're going to start by opening up the breakout rooms and I hope you all have some fun exploring those questions. <laughs> 